All right, hi, I'm Kenny Reed. I'm the skipper of Comanche. Uh, we're standing in the back of the old girl, and uh, just as a little comparison before we get into the features of this one, let's take a look at Wild Oats. So Wild Oats is our main competitors, and you can really see the difference between the two boats. You can almost fit two Wild Oats in the same, in the width of, of this boat, of Comanche. So it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a stark contrast with regard to how the, how the design evolution of the boat actually happened. It's uh, pretty cool because the boats are actually quite similar in speeds uh, when it comes to a lot of different points of sail, but for sure there'll be several points of sail where they're quite different. And one of them will be light air. They'll have a big advantage. Any sort of re reaching condition, we should have a big advantage. So as we take you through the boat here real quick, you'll hear all kinds of noises and see all kinds of things. It's because this is a work day and there's all kinds of stuff going on in Comanche. It's really, it's constantly a work in progress. So we'll kind of go around and we'll focus on some certain areas and, uh, and have a look. We are not in, in the sailing business, we are in the entertainment business. You know, we, we make sure that people like Jim and Christy Clark have fun. And, and that's for any young sailors coming up in the ranks, that's the most important thing. Get involved in projects like this. It's not about you. It's not even about the boat. It's about the people who own the project. And Jim and Christy are they're wonderful friends. And at the same time, uh, they're very, very competitive, so it's a great balance between doing whatever you can to, to try to win the race and making it fun for them. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think that's really important. But Jim's done some big projects beforehand, hasn't he? He's done some fantastic so class Jim, yachts. So Jim has had a bunch of boats over the years. Currently, he owns three boats. He has uh, a 300-foot triple-masted schooner called Athena, uh, just a small little cruising boat. Yeah. Um, He's got Hanneman, which is a 140-foot replica J-boat, which is how he and I got together. I, I helped him with that, uh, the racing part of that boat's program. And then this boat, so three, four, 540 feet for the boat. So a reasonable amount of boat. I think he's ready to downsize a little bit on his, no, on his total feet of boat sold, but uh, he's always wanted a race boat. He's always wanted a full-blown race boat. And this is his, this is his, shot at it and the way he looks at it is it's kind of this is his sports franchise you know um you know i equated to the new england patriots very successful sports franchise football team back at home american football and bob Kraft doesn't go out on the field and throw the throw the touchdown passes he relies on other people to do that and jim is kind of the same way he, he helps with the infrastructure he helps uh, with the concept and then he lets the pros go do their thing. Yeah, right. it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. It's quite yeah. an interesting yeah. philosophy. Yeah, and I guess you probably the whole race boat thing probably didn't come together until he came together with you. Yeah, yeah. well, exactly. He probably ruse the day that he met me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he decided to do this, it was. I questioned it. I'm like, are you sure? You know what you're getting yourself into? And he said, well, not really, but it looks like fun. Let's do it. Uh, right. Let's let's do it. And when he does things, he does things doesn't do them half-assed uh, you know in anything he's done he's been a pioneer in industry and the only way you do that is by taking risks and and those risks paying off so hopefully this is yet another educated risk that pays off um, essentially two sides and obviously that's important because you're way out on the high side when the boat's healing over you get a view of the whole horizon the view of the uh, the wind and the waves um, you sail the boat a bit like a multi-hull in a way. It's so wide, you kind of rock it up on its leeward hull. You know, that's what it feels like. I, I sail a lot of uh, catamarans at home now, and this boat has much more of a feel of a catamaran than it does a traditional monohull. Um, and you literally just sail it on edge, sail it on a rail down there. And that's why we need a little bit of breeze to do that. You need to heal the boat over to get it to, to do that. And without healing it over, it, uh, the, the whole concept really doesn't work great because you're dragging around this big fat ass, you know, and it's really, it's not perfect. Light, light air isn't perfect for this boat, but hopefully we can always rip around and go find breeze somewhere. Somewhere. Hey, what about during tax, Kenny? Do you have to? Is someone helming the, on the other side? You come uh, out yeah, so we side, so we'll, get we'll roll into attack, and I'll come out on the leeward side, balance it up. Kelvin Harrop grabs it there, just literally walk across, and he holds it for about five seconds, and yeah. and off you go. It's right. really, you know, it's 
Like any boat, the more you sail it, the more it becomes easy, like less intimidating. And when we first got on this boat, you're just listening for creaks and groans and, you know, kind of terrifying, to be honest. And the more we sail it, the more it just becomes a boat. You know, it gets, we keep kidding, it gets smaller by the day. Every minute we spend on this boat, it gets smaller. And that's good. That's a good thing. Because you don't want to be, you don't want to be scared of the boat. And obviously this boat can get pretty out of control pretty quickly if you don't manage it properly. And we're learning how to manage it every day. Yeah. yeah. These, um, is the uh, backstays? Yeah, the backstays go all the way out to the main, corner. Big square top main. There's only one backstay, but you'll notice there's three puller lines that actually control the mast bend going up and down. Um, it's really... This was developed in the last Volvo race. One of the teams went to this extreme, and now all the new boats are kind of coming out with this concept. Big swept back spreaders. Yeah. Uh, it's really, you know, this is really modern, modern, modern thinking. This is the latest and greatest. You look at how many stays are on wild oats, for example. I mean, we have about half the amount of stays yeah. that, that are being, being used. So it's a windage thing. Uh, and it's also a way to control, maybe, hopefully control the mass a little bit bigger. I think our mass is about three meters taller than wild boats. You know, we're yeah. bigger, we're heavier, we're wider, we're taller, more sail area, just a more volume, more stuff, you know, and it works. <laughs> and what are you driving here? What is the stuff you all... Yeah, so this, is, so this is, uh, really, there's one, there's one page here where we use all the time. The keel cant is right now, it's 12 degrees over to the port side. Yeah. Rudder angle, how much rudder load you have. Heel yeah. angle, you're trying to sail it you know, up over 20 degrees most of the time. Uh, reaching percentage, which means are you sailing the boat up to its potential or not? Yeah. Hopefully that's at 100%. Yeah. Uh, trim, which means fore and aft trim. Depth, because when we draw almost seven meters, we're pretty nervous getting in and out of the harbor. Sure. And then head stay load, that's just a general head stay load, so yeah. I know if everything's in balance or not okay. with the running backstays and, and like hydraulics and all the different loads. Yeah. Okay. So that's this is pri primarily the page the helms person uses. Yeah. And then this is keel control. It's the only time you have to turn the engine on. You, the, engi the engine's on right now. Right. So you fire up the engine here, and then you, you tilt the keel to port tilt it to starboard uh, or you stop it in between. You can float it from from all the way up down to center if you wanted to and this is the man overboard button. If somebody falls overboard you hit that quick yeah. and that pinpoints exactly where you are in the water oh, and okay. it shows up on the chart downstairs. Right. So a little bit of safety, safety uh, a little bit of technology and, and uh, fine-tuning of right. how, we, how we deal with the whole thing. I know she put her compass on here from an optimist. I was just wondering about the Yeah, so the rule was. the rule makes you uh, have a card compass right, out on yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah, It's something we would never use, so it's simply the lightest, lightest. smallest, yeah. cheapest uh, compass we could ever find. Right. It, it looks kind of funny on a boat like this, but it's... Uh, well, the kids will like it, Kenny. The kids will love seeing this going well. It's like so one for of those. you kids. Okay. Uh, even we use compasses too. Unfortunately, we've never actually looked at that compass. <laughs> you look at your compasses back at home. <laughs> so, uh, so like wild oats, for example, is all push button winches. So the, the difference being is that the push button winch forces you to have the engine on all the time. Engine on all the time means you got to carry a lot of fuel. Fuel means extra weight. So what we decided to do was go kind of old school back to manual winches and literally on like a transatlantic crossing, it's almost two tons of weight in fuel that we don't have to carry versus another 100 footer. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is I think it keeps everybody's heads in the game. I, I sail what's now Loyal, you know, uh, which was Rambler 100 at the time. And you know, helmsman drives, mainsail trimmer has a push button, that's a trimmer has a push button, and everybody just sits around, gets stale. And here, okay, everybody's into it. You're rotating yeah. people through. Everybody's into it. So everybody's still looking around. You know, it's when it's when you get stagnant. It's when you kind of take your concentration away. Is when bad things happen. So uh, I like it. I, I think it's great. I think the guys like it. I think yeah. the guys like getting into it. Safety first. So what he's doing? This is called shark bait. <laughs> Got uh, 30 meters to go. Uh, 20 meters. Yeah. Here he is over there. Anyway, 
How did you lose two crew? Well, it's an interesting story. We <laughs> dragged them through the water at 146 no, I was, I was, The fun part of sailing boats like this, we sail it as shorthanded as we can. So, uh, you know, we sail with 23 people. Um, always have somewhere around 13, 14 on deck at a time. But 13 or 14 on deck, you're doing any sort of maneuver. Everybody gets into everything. So. Right. Uh, if you're not driving, you're grinding. If you're not grinding, you're up on the bow pulling a sail down. Um, it really, it, it's like the Volvo experience. It takes you back to your roots. Well, you know, I was a bowman at the age of 15, like everybody else, every other 15 year old kid yeah. in the world, you know? And and it's fun. You get, in, you get back into your roots of sailing more than just being pigeonholed into being a driver or a trimmer or a pitman or wh whatever it may be. So I, I like it that way. I think it's way more fun. The Biggest sail in the boat. What size? What size area is that? The, um, big, the biggest size. This biggest sail in the boat is a, a 1,150 square meters. Wow. It's one. It's really our own kind of free. Our only free flying right. uh, downwind sail. And when, when, was, when was that made? Uh, it was that made sail. in Milford, Connecticut. So, right. so all the north. These are all north sails. The sails themselves are kind of special. They're they're a new type of technology. It's really this is about the third big boat in the world that they've ever been tried on. About 15 percent lighter than the lightest sails we've ever made. It's called 3DI Raw. Um, it's why they're all carbon fiber, of course. That yeah. jet black uh, finish. Yeah, they're they're interesting. They're they're like anything. I went to Jim and said we got a chance as North Sales to try something a little bit different here, and Jim doesn't even hesitate. Right. What's the what's the benefits? Well, this this and this. Well, it's no brainer. Then right. Do it. It's like all right. Do it. So we've saved a fair chunk of weight all up on this on this sale package compared to another sale package just using this new technology. Yeah. Jim's cabin. <laughs> the owner's cabin. Christie's cabin. Christie's cabin. Christie's in the doghouse, so that's where she gets in. <laughs> right. um, this is obviously a watertight type bulkhead in case you run into anything and puncture the front of the boat. Um, this can just contain the water up front. There's actually a second watertight bulkhead up in front of this. It's, what's interesting here are all these stringers that run fore and aft. This is a, called a monolithic. Um, there's no core, so it's actually solid carbon with all these stringers and all these stringers were put in after the fact they have to fit perfectly they're all one piece from bow back all the way through to the main bulkhead and it's just it's just kind of engineering ingenuity it's really this is different this is no no boat this big has ever been done anything like this and there's no there's nothing on board the boat that isn't for lightweight and fast the only thing we ever did on the boat to kind of for a slight bit of comfort is we have a human toilet. So, so you can you can be comfortable when you go to the loo. Nice. But it's carbon fiber of course. Yeah, it's the lightest toilet ever made. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so it's uh, 
That's it. That's, that's the only. It's the only thing on the whole boat that is for any sort of comfort. Bunks, obviously, just plain verse, all made of carbon, don't weigh anything. Um, everything. Yeah. I mean, you come back here, you look at the, you look at the galley. Two burners yep. that you'd bring <clears throat> camping. You know, that's that's, that's it. it. But you do have twin sinks now. Carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah twin, twin sinks. So you can do it from the high side. So you can have them on the high side. That's yeah. a luxury, I guess. Yeah. Uh, carbon fiber coffee dispenser. Nice. So you can bring six coffees six out coffees. into the cockpit at a time. Which is <laughs> very important. Yeah. We will make these for $5,000. You can have your own carbon fiber. Uh, hydraulics. You know, there's hydraulics kind of hidden everywhere. They kind of tops off of this right now. But this is the hydraulics. It controls the check stays up on the mast, uh, uh, controlling the, the mast bend and all those loads. It's a deck step mast. Uh, this is the mast post that it sits on. It's actually a deck step mast. Uh, and then all of this structure here houses the hydraulic cylinders to can't the keel back and forth. Really, the biggest speed producing uh, feature on a boat like this is the fact that the keel tilts from side to side 35 degrees yeah. and all those massive hydraulic cylinders are housed in this big carbon structure and the carbon structure on the other side. Right. You can uh, take your camera and you can see the keel head right there on the top. It's obviously sitting almost straight up and down in the boat. That's the head of the keel. The hydraulic cylinders. Oh luxury. yeah, the luxury. This is beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, so this is us. Um, it actually tilts from side to oh, side, wow. kind of moves around so you can sit on the high side here. Right. But this is where Stan Honey lives. And uh, it's not just a nav station, but it's really the electronics for the whole boat are kind of wired through here. So he can monitor everything going on. and. If I said that I knew what was going on in here, I would be flying. <laughs> I was going to test you on a couple of no, <laughs> command I, shifts. I can just turn <laughs> the computer on, and that's it's about the end of my abilities. So, fortunately, a guy named Sean Healy has done all the wiring on the boat, um, and Stan right. there. There's nobody yeah. there. No, he's the, he's, he's great. And Isn't so, amazing? yeah, this is this is it. This is the kind of the brain center of the of the project. All right kind of fascinating. It's, it, like the rest of the boat, it's not necessarily made for comfort. Yeah. But, uh, it certainly is light. I mean, even the even the desk is cord carbon fiber. So if there's no reason for it to be on board, it's not on board. Right. That's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you asked the questions about the life rafts? Yeah. Uh, probably better to film it from the dock. Yeah, we're doing some stuff. There's one here. They live in their own little housing cases right here. Right. In the it's essentially, if you ever lost a keel or something, the boat very quickly will be upside down. And in the Rambler 100 incident, they couldn't get at the, the life rafts lived right here. Right. And once it flipped over, yeah. they couldn't get at them. They right. use them. So yeah. it's a pretty dangerous spot. So we think this, this type of situation, no matter what happens, we have a little better chance of actually using them. Right. Getting at them. Good. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the tour. Kenny, fantastic. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for coming, guys. And uh, keep taking great photos of your little brothers crashing and burning down whatever bay they happen to be sailing.